Welcome back to Between the Horns. Our guest today is an Olympic trials qualifier and an overall just beast in the pool, Kobe Carroza. We're so excited to have you on today, man. How are you doing? Good. Thank you for having me. Awesome. So you're four here. How's it feeling? What's the season looking like? Um, it's going well. I mean, I can't believe I'm already a senior. And um, it's been pretty fun just being able to guide the incoming freshmen. And we've had about three dual meets so far, and we got A&M tomorrow. What it, Friday, sorry. Yeah, on Friday. Uh, although this will be coming out a little bit later, so yeah. it's okay. Yeah, okay. Um, looking back, though, you said you, one of your responsibilities now is guiding in the freshmen. What does that look like for you? I mean, um, as far as just showing them just overall how it works, you know, um, I like to work a lot with them on their techniques and stuff in practice, but most of it is just showing them the ropes and just explaining how stuff goes. What was your, uh, this question we, we like to ask to a lot of our student athletes, but what was your welcome to Texas moment? Speaking about the mentors, like what do you tell, you know, freshmen coming in um, and kind of what was your, that oh wow moment for you when you got here? Um, I think firstly is like practice is going to be pretty hard yeah. and um, <laughs> it's an everyday thing. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, Eddie says a lot to do extraordinary things at the end of the season. You got to do extraordinary things every day. Yeah. And so um, I just tell him just, Push yourself every day and focus on fine details. And it's not just in the pool you got to take care of. You also got to take care of once you leave the pool. That's honestly most, might be the most important part is just recovering. And with this being Coach Reese's last year, can you talk about how playing, I say playing, but really swimming for Coach Reese has developed you as a swimmer? Um, I mean, it's been an honor, honestly. I think most people in the sport of swimming would like to be able to swim for Eddie Reese. And, I'm very fortunate to be able to swim for him. And um, he just, he has so much like wisdom. He just, he's been there, done that a lot. <laughs> so basically every situation you find yourself in, Eddie's gonna know how to work through it, yeah. And what are some other, I guess just like nuggets of wisdom? Like what are other common things that he says that I guess you carry with you? Yeah, um, I think he says a lot is like, um, take care of yourself and take care of your teammates and the rest will take care of itself. That's honestly, it's something we have to keep in mind going through the season, especially in championship season, because it's like people can worry about all these exter external factors, like what are the other teams doing, you know, how are they looking, but all that matters really is what you're doing and what your friends are doing. I kind of want to take you back a little bit. I know that you come from a family of Longhorns. Can you talk about what that experience was like with you growing up, and did they influence you to come to the University of Texas? Um, yeah, I mean, honestly, my, so my sister swam for Texas, my brother ran for Texas, but growing up as a swimmer, and especially swimmer in Texas, like Texas swimming is like the pinnacle of swimming. And so like, I think almost everyone looks up to Texas swimming and it's just like, that's the goal. You wanna be there. And having, you know, my sister swim for Texas and my brother commit there for track, it was, it was nice, it just made the decision easier, but I would have come to Texas regardless. Either way, yeah. yeah. Curious, uh, you know, why the guy kind of the difference in track and swimming? I know your dad kind of has a yeah. club that runs here. And funny enough, one of the other interns uh, he ran for your dad. Ran for your dad. So he's like, yeah, <laughs> he was we talking us yesterday. yesterday. Yeah, uh, Drew, shout out Drew. Yeah, but kind of when when you were growing up, was it always swimming for you? Um, I mean, I swimming was definitely what I was best at. I definitely had other hobbies like growing up. Like you like to say, like. I hate swimming, like, yeah, <laughs> I want to play basketball or football or, yeah, and stuff like that, yeah. but, so, like, I, I played other sports for fun, but I was never, like, serious in anything other than swimming, and, I mean, I don't think there's really any need to be serious in swimming until you're in high school anyway. Gotcha. It's interesting that you say that, though, because I think the trend now within youth sports is to kind of specialize early. Yeah. Like, you see five-year-old kids, six-year-old kids talking about, I'm a swimmer Records and a swimmer and stuff, only, yeah. and things of that nature. What do you kind of think about that? I just think, like, um, it just, that could just lead to burnout, you know? Mm -hmm. There's, like, something, people say in, like, swimming, it's, like, a curse to be really good at 10 years old. Mm -hmm. I think Carson Foster is, like, one of the only... <laughs> people have sustained his dominance since like eight years old because like a lot of them just like I think if you, when people are really good at like 10 years old at swimming it's like you're just good because you're bigger than everyone mm -hmm. and so like I think people who develop later they're only being like they end up being better because they're where they are because they worked hard not because they were just a big 12 year old gotcha. so when did you realize that you were good <laughs> um 
I don't know, probably freshman or sophomore year of high school. Wow, that's yeah. kind of a late realization. Yeah, it? I mean, yeah, basically. I wasn't like a dominant 10 year old or anything like that. <laughs> dominant 10 year old. <laughs> yeah. And I guess like in high school, what are some things you did to I guess position yourself to have this, like come to the University of Texas? Um, I mean, just working hard, honestly. Yeah. Just working on technique, training hard in the, pre in the pool, mm -hmm. and uh, just trying to recover. Go to bed at nine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> at, at what point did you decide to make swimming your main sport? Um, I think freshman year. Freshman year? Yeah. I was, so I always swam, like, I've been doing club swimming since I was six years old. And oh, wow. Summer league swimming since I was probably, I don't know, three, four. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's, that's and, uh, crazy. But, like, I was never serious. Mm -hmm. Like, I would maybe swim, like, three or four times a week and get kicked out. But that, that's get, not yeah. serious? No, not, I don't know. <laughs> some, some, some little kids are doing, like, doubles, which is, like, working out twice a day. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. And, like, those are the people who burn out. You know what? Now that you bring that up, and this is a side tangent, you can totally cut this out. Uh, I worked as a lifeguard. That was my very first job up until I got here. And there was this little girl who would come in with her parents every morning. At, as soon as the pool would open, they'd be waiting outside yeah. the gate. They'd go into the lap pool. They would swim for two hours straight. The girl would like, like there were several times I saw her like crying, yeah, like coming good. out of the pool. And then they would come back before we closed and like do. They called it cool down laps. Yeah. So it wasn't as intense. I remember asking yeah. her about it. I was like, this is what she wants to do? And I'm like, yeah. She wants to be a professional swimmer. And yeah. that was not the story for no, you? No, not at all. Like, I was, I was more interested in, like, um, like skateboarding and BMXing and stuff. And gotcha. Swimming was always like, oh, you got to go to practice. <laughs> yeah. How did your parents kind of approach that? Um, like um, all being, like, you know, phenomenal athletes. Um, yeah. So they're kind of I think they definitely, like, encouraged – me and, and my siblings growing up, like my brother's a runner. He swam. Like he didn't really run until high school. Oh, wow. Like he was always really good at running, yeah, yeah. but they like held him because they didn't want him to like, you know, be the 10 year old doing doubles. Burn out, yeah. Yeah. And so, I mean, they definitely were like, would make, if, we, if it was our choice, we probably never would have gone. Yeah. But like as far as like swim meets like, and like competing, it was yeah. never serious. Yeah. It's so always just fun. Yeah. I think you got to keep it fun. Even yeah. now. Yep. If it's not fun, it, it's going to be hard to do. So speaking of that, how do you make, like, continue keeping it fun? And now it's like you just came back from the Pan Am Games, right? Yeah. You're representing Team USA. There's always pressure, pressure, pressure. How yeah. do you still find just time to just, like, love the sport? Yeah. I mean, I think you're always, most of the time, you're surrounded by your friends. And you just got to remember to keep it fun. Because, I mean, yeah, the second it becomes a chore, you're not going to do as well as – you're never going to outperform the guy having fun. Yeah. And, um – yeah, honestly, you just got to relax. I think, a lot, honestly, you just got to act like it doesn't matter. Yeah. That's, like the, that's what a lot of people have t told me. Like, Austin Katz, he was my senior. Mm -hmm. He's, like, NC2A champion, stuff like that. And he just told me, like, his mentors tell him, it's just a swim meet, bro. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. And, it's like, I think that meet. mindset helps a lot. Yeah. Can you dive deeper into your mindset, though? Yeah. I mean, I think, obviously, once you dive in the water, mm -hmm. it's, like, go and win the race. But, like in the ready rooms and stuff. It's just fun, like, to sit back. You're, you're, most of the time, you're going to know someone in the ready room with you. And mm -hmm. you just, if you're having a good time in the ready room, yeah. and the people are sitting there nervous next to you. Yeah. Like, you already won. Yep. You already won. Yeah. <laughs> when, you are in, when you are getting ready, the pre-race routine, one, what's going on in the headphones, and two, yeah. kind of just getting your, your body right. What kind of, what pre-race rituals, routines do you kind of I'm, have? so, I honestly don't have that many pre-race rituals. I don't. I listen to uh, music, like, on the way to the pool, like, in the car or if I'm walking, like, on the bus and, like, dual meet or something. But honestly, when I get there, I just try to relax and honestly just, like, talk with my friends. Yeah, yeah. And it's just something that's helped me. It's not, like, that's not, like, what you need to do. Mm -hmm. Some people are, like, headphones on, dialed in. Like, don't talk to them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not like that. Yeah. <laughs> Can you take us into your, your signature? <laughs> <laughs> your so, uh, Brett Ringgold, he's, like, a... Texas swimming uh, legend. He's actually my brother-in-law now. Oh, congratulations uh, yeah, to yeah. your sister? Well, yeah, that was like 20. They got married in like 2018. Oh, no, yeah, he's like, yeah, he's been too many Thanksgiving times he's, now. He's <laughs> the one who, who coined this. Wow. Yeah, man. and uh, yeah, I remember I was sitting, I'd be in high school, you know? Yeah. Because they were dating before 2018, obviously. <laughs> I was in high school. Now I was, in, yeah, still I was like, Texas swimmer, I want to go to Texas. Yeah. And, um. Yeah, I'd see pictures of him doing this, and I was like, that is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Wow. So I got here, I had to do it, and then my brother started doing it too. Gotcha. 
can you talk about the dynamic between you and your siblings? Like, what, what was it like as kids, and then what is it like now? Um, I mean, obviously, my sister, she's, like, older. She's five years older than me. And, gotcha. like, I was never, like, competitive with my sister. But really? My brother, like, we're, like, a year or two apart. And, like, we did a lot of same stuff. So we were obviously very, very competitive, competitive most of what we do, but... Ask him his last swim race as a club swimmer. I beat him. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. What do we think the record is between you and him? Um, swimming? Mm -hmm. Ooh. I don't know. I think he's actually a really good swimmer. Okay. But um, his he, yeah, he'd probably beat me more just because really? growing up. But, like, once he started phasing out, like, yeah, was, I, I, started, be I started beating him. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and, Chris, I know obviously swimming um, – the amount of calories y'all burn. So what's been, what's your favorite, like, actually not even favorite, like the craziest cheat day, like cheat oh, day God. you've had. Cheat day meal? I not think, even meal, the whole, the whole thing. Oh, yeah. What's the day yeah. eating? Every meal. Like, for, for yeah. I mean, normally, so I, I do my best to eat healthy, like always, but when the end of season meets over, like just you and your friends, just, yeah, you yeah. Go, yeah, like in seas the last night, like, it's just like, you're just uber eating like a, large pizza yourself or <laughs> pints of ice cream and then yeah. you do the same thing the next day yeah after so we just got back from pan ams and like we finished the f the meat and we had been eating um like the village food it's like a dining hall gotcha. and just like we went out in the city and yeah we just had, like we we missed american food too and like yeah. I, we know we don't even normally eat like this but like yeah. we went to like a mall we got McDonald's, Taco Bell. Oh, my um, gosh. We got milkshakes. Oh, yeah. my gosh. And then, yeah, that night Just we got in. pizza. <laughs> it was – and more ice cream. Yeah, yeah we went off. Cream. Yeah, yeah. But we normally don't do that. But when the when your meat's over, you can do that. Can you talk more about your Pan Am experience? Um, yeah, it was super awesome. Mm -hmm. I think apart from, like, the people you meet in swimming, traveling the world for swimming, it's, like, got to be the best part. What's been the coolest place you've been? Um, I went to uh, summer 22 – I went to Croatia Ooh. and there was like kind of like a training camp mm -hmm. and we were like, we were basically in like a resort on the water. Wow. It was so nice. nice. Yeah. I didn't want to leave. Yeah. What are there any other, or what's like number, number one, like pool on your bucket list to swim in? To swim in? Yeah. Ooh. Um, probably Italy. Italy? Yeah. Just not even because there's like, like a Como? pool there. I just, yeah, <laughs> I just, I just really want to go to Italy. I want to check it out. And like, yeah. A couple of years ago, there was a swim meet there, mm -hmm. like World University Games were there in like I think 2019. Yeah, sure. I was too young, obviously, but I want to dive a little bit into kind of the dynamic between I guess like Team USA in general and swimming, thinking of it as a kind of a team sport, right? Because even yeah. though as much as an individual, yeah. you're still building chemistry in college, and when you go represent Team USA and you do relays, obviously there's team work involved, right? Yeah. Um, so going to Pan Ams, how do you like quickly foster like that connection with other swimmers? Yeah. on the rest of your team it's honestly the swimming community is pretty close and like you go to these meets and you don't you know who they are obviously yeah. but you, know, you don't really you don't really talk to them and honestly by like day two or three of their like these guys seem like your best friends yeah because yeah. you're just like from basically 6 a.m to like 9 p.m you're hanging out with these guys yeah. and like or they'll be your roommate mm -hmm. and um uh, it, yeah it's super fun and swimming is like at least for like USA swimming relays, like you, it's good to have like cohesive as friends. But at the end of the day, like you're swimming your own race. Like you're not. Yeah, it's not like you need to know how to pass the ball to him. Or, it. yeah, 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 it's just like you're going in, you're racing. You know, each guy on your team wants to beat the team next to him. Wow. Yeah, relays are super fun though. Yeah. yeah. You know, something that we talked about with another athlete that we recently had on, um, they were talking about their uh, U15 experience mm -hmm. or something of that nature. Is it the same thing in swimming where it's kind of like the same kids from the U15, U16? Yeah. And it's, 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 it's not exactly the same, but there's definitely a lot of, like, it, it repeats a lot. What was your first? My first was uh, summer 22. Like, I, I was someone who's never on, like, junior national team trips or anything, which is, yeah, it's just... I was not, I'm not like a late bloomer. I was good in high school, but yeah. I've definitely like progressed. Yeah. Yeah. Dive into that though. Like how did it feel to finally make your first it was, international yeah, team? Yeah, it was, it was awesome. Yeah. I mean, I was, I was decently close to junior national teams in um, high school, but like you'll meet people on the, na on the like senior national trips and they'll tell you that stuff doesn't matter. And was that... Uh, was that the, after that, was that the first Swim Swim article you got? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I, no, I, I mean, I probably had some when I was in high school, but I, I don't read that stuff. You don't read it? No. Not at all? You promise? Uh, yeah, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. 
<laughs> yeah, we were talking about that um, with Emma, obviously. I, yeah. I still think it's crazy that the whole community is, it is really tight knit. Yeah. And the fact that people are you know, having a messaging board, like think about thinking about like the pressure that I guess like just puts on student athletes. And yeah. It's just like, you know, ultimately you're just trying to come out here, perform. And a lot of people commenting commentary online have never done what you've done and yeah. physically can't. Yeah, no, yeah, they're definitely, yeah. It's, it's funny too, because especially with our men's team is like, um, just like, like last year we had people like, like just kind of just like quit swimming or leave or stuff like that. And it's funny that like these swim swim, I don't, I don't read them, but like someone would show me them and like, um, it's funny that like all these people are saying all this stuff and they, they have no idea. Yeah. Like, it's just, I can imagine someone like a, like a basketball player or football, like with so much more media, yeah. right. it's probably crazy. And it's just like, yeah, these people have no idea what they're talking about. Yeah. And they, yet they like, they have a very opinionated like stance or they think they know they're right, yeah. you know? It's funny, honestly. It's, it's funny to me. Right? Yeah, yeah. Because they, yeah no, they, they, they can coach better than uh, Coach Eddie Reese, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Your opinion. Right. yeah t- tell them what you do better. On this segment of this or that, actually, y'all know what this or that is. Let's just get into it. Kobe, lake or pool? Ooh. I'm going to go lake just so I can like wake surf and stuff like that. Morning practice or afternoon practice? Afternoon practice, for sure. Weightlifting or conditioning? Um, conditioning. I, weightlifting is fun. I'm just bad at it. <laughs> <laughs> what's, your, what's, your, what's your least favorite lift? Uh, squat. <laughs> <laughs> I've got chicken legs. So. <laughs> Italian or Mexican? Oh, that's so hard. I think I'm just because I'm from... Texas, I'm going Mexican food. Mexican. ACL or South by Southwest? Oh, I'll go ACL. Lake Austin or Lady Bird? Uh, Lake Austin, yeah. Tacos or barbecue? Tacos. Coffee or tea? Coffee, 100%. Austin or Austin? <laughs> Austin, yeah. <laughs> Is that actually on here? That's out there. <laughs> I thought you were on purpose. So I was like, oh, we're wrong. We're wrong. That was not on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> that was this or that. Now let's get back into the conversation. All right, Kobe. Let me bring you back to high school. Junior or senior year, I'm not sure when this happened for you, but what was it like to get the call from Coach Ed Reese? Yeah, so I was a junior, and um, I think the rule that year had switched from senior year recruiting to junior year. And it was, I forget the date. It might have been, like, September 1st or something. And I wasn't even expecting, I don't know, I didn't think of myself as that good of a swimmer, at least when I was, like, a, a junior, or going into junior year. And I remember I just woke up on, like, September 1st with, like, probably like 50 emails. And I was like, and I was just like scrolling through them. I was looking for Texas and Texas wasn't on the email list. Oh. And I was like, no. And um, so I go, I swam Longhorn Aquatics, which trains at this pool. Mm-hmm. So I, yeah, I didn't go far for college, but um, I remember I was walking in and um, Wyatt, the assistant coach walked up to me and he's like, hey man, like the email didn't get through. Like, can you write? Oh. Yeah, yeah. He's like, can you write? Can you write down your email? And I had to play it cool. I'm like, yeah, I give that. <laughs> I wrote it down. Yeah, he walked away, and I probably like jumped in the air. Yeah, <laughs> and then, um, I mean, yeah, the recruiting process is super fun, but it's also pretty stressful, mm-hmm. just because yeah, you're deciding where you're gonna spend the next at least four years of your life, and um, yeah, but I mean, it was super fun, and getting recruited by Eddie and Wyatt is just yeah, Eddie's. Eddie's pretty realistic with the recruiting too. <laughs> so you knew exactly <laughs> like, what you're getting yeah, into. Yeah, yeah, you knew exactly what you're getting into. And yeah, I think I remember Eddie called me like one time and he was like on the spin bike or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. And he's like, he'd be like out of breath in between like each sentence. And I was like, are you okay, Eddie? <laughs> he's like, yeah, I'm just on the spin bike. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Um, what was your favorite moment from your official visit? Oh, um, actually, I have a funny story. Um, on my official visit, I don't remember who the guy was, but my host was Matt Willenbring, and that was back when recruits could go, like, like, they still go on the field. I don't know if I was, I think I might have been the reason it changed. We were, like, (laughs) during, like, the warm-up for the game, we were, like, literally on the field. Like, we were in the, like, kind of, like, on the end zone near, like, what is that, like, the five-yard line or something. Oh, oh, wow. And so, but, like, we were more in the end zone, and we were taking pictures, and, um, I just remember, like, I was, like, doing this with, like, Matt Willenbring. And all of a sudden, I just, like, I'm on the floor, like, looking up. And I'm like, I just got hit by a golf cart or something. <laughs> and, I, and I roll over, and I just see this, like, I don't know. It, was, it must have been, like, a receiver, like a tight end running a route. Oh, and so he I was, see. like, yeah, he was like this. And he caught yeah. the ball and just, like, 
I was just, I was like one second I was standing there, the next second I was literally just laying on the ground. We got to figure out who that was. Yeah, there's, I know. I, I got to figure it out. There's a video of this somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> somewhere. And yeah, and Matt Willenbring had like his like, he like rolled his ankle or something because the guy oh stepped gosh. on his ankle. Like, oh my God, it was crazy. Yeah, he just, I remember like turning around looking up to him and he just like ran away. <laughs> <laughs> so with this being your senior year at Texas and you look back through your memories here and the memories that you've gotten to make with different guys who have come through the team, what stands out to you as your favorite? Ooh, I mean, swimming for Texas, like, and just anyone on any program, you're going to make lifelong friends. But um, I think uh, Drew Kivler, he was a junior when I was a freshman, and he trained uh, at Texas like a year for as a pro after, and he swims my events, and he just kind of just basically took me in, showed me the ropes, and I owe a lot of my success to him. And also Carson. He's like my best friend, but he's my age, but he's so good, like I gotta get advice from him. What what are some I guess good pieces of advice that Carson's um, giving you? Carson's really good at like uh, telling me what I need to do like in the race and stuff like that and in practice and I think Drew's more of like a really good at like mindset advice. Interesting. Yeah. So looking forward, what are some of your personal goals coming up for this year um, and this season? I mean obviously I wanna make the Olympic team, which is in June, the Olympic trials. And then, honestly, I'm a senior. I just want to have some fun. Yeah. Just, yeah, lead, try and be a good leader for the team. And, yeah, just do what I can do. And our final question to end this amazing podcast, Kobe, is what makes Texas elite? Um, I think what makes Texas elite is just I feel like we strive for excellence in every aspect, like whether it be academics, athletics, research. I'm really glad I came to Texas because, like, we basically have it all. Like, we're, we're really good in school, and we have really good sports, and there's obviously other stuff I'm missing, but, you know, we're an awesome city. And um, I think the alumni, the fans, they just, it's a really special thing to be a part of, and I wouldn't trade it for anything. That's amazing, Cousy. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us yeah, today. Thank you it's for been having an me. absolute pleasure. We thoroughly enjoyed this episode, man. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in to this episode of Between the Horns. If you aren't already subscribed, like I say every time, what are you doing? It's free. Be sure to like, comment, and share. And as always, that gate, gotta off that gate, gotta off that gate, gotta off that gate.